my backpack had actually broken, they actually emptied their own backpack and gave me hers. You don't have a power bank for your phone? Here is mine. I was like, oh my god, that's too much. They picked me up and I actually stayed with them for two weeks. I think right in this moment, I was adopted. <laughs> But, uh, and we're still in touch until this day, five years later. Some of you might recognize her from the video we made with Little Europe, or maybe you even saw her during Europe Day serving sausages left and right. But for those of you who for some reason have not seen the previous video, can we just give them a little bit of a recap and uh, a quick summary of who is Maya and what are you doing here in Taiwan? So my name is Maya, I am from Germany. I study in the Netherlands and I already came to Taiwan uh, five years ago and I always wanted to come back. During my first trip here, I actually hitchhiked all like, 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 around the island. Like, like the, with the thumb hitchhiked. Yes, like thing. this. I was standing like the, the, the old school way, before, <laughs> yeah. uh, before smartphone way. Uh, yes, exactly. I actually managed to circle the whole island almost. Hitch hitchhiking? Hitchhiking, yes. It was a little bit difficult to get out of Taipei. But I've been trying for 12 years, so like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's very hard <laughs> to that's, get out of Taipei. That's how I started. And in the previous video, you shared that the, the whole reason for why you basically knew Taiwan existed was because of a few backpackers mm -hmm. in Vietnam. I was traveling for a year and a half in Asia and I met those backpackers by chance. We had a lot of um, adventures in, in Vietnam and they kept on talking about how, how great Taiwan is. So I completely trusted them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mistake number one. I need to put on this like warning. Don't blame me if anything goes wrong. You know? At your own risk. <laughs> exactly. Performed by professionals. <laughs> yes, don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> I would argue that the true beauty of Taiwan is not something that you actually see unless you have actually stayed here for like a month and already decided to like settle down. From, mm. a, from a backpacking perspective, do you actually agree that Taiwan is, is good as a backpacker destination in, in Asia? It depends what you mean. So if you mean with the true uh, value, the true treasure of Taiwan, the people, um, then it's, it's, it's true. But I would still say against your opinion, maybe oh. that... Um... I'm going to edit this later anyway. It doesn't matter. You can, you can talk for as much as you want. <laughs> that it would still be a great place to visit. The first thing I did was step into a 7-Eleven. It was like a whole new world. Uh, beautiful smell of, you know, whatever is cooking in those things. I don't know what it's called, where you can grab the, the tofu and you know what I'm, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's so safe, so organized, so beautiful. So I would say it's a great place to visit, but I sort of also want the, um, I want Taiwan to be a bit of a secret, you know? <laughs> uh, maybe that's a little bit egoistic, but I don't want Taiwan to be overrun by tourism. And I kind of laugh then that um, whenever I tell people that I want to go to Taiwan, they're like, Taiwan? Why Taiwan? <laughs> and it's um, it's always a surprise and then I get to tell people about um, about Taiwan. Maybe the best things are li in life are just meant to be experienced and not completely understood maybe. Mm -hmm. You're here on a little bit shorter visit this time. This I would time, say. yes. Yeah. And then you're, you're already planning on, on your return back to to Netherlands. Exactly. I have to go back to the Netherlands to uh, present my thesis. But actually, I, I love it so much here in Taiwan that I I want to come back and actually live here for the next I don't know, two, three, four, five years. That's how much I, I like it. But now I got uh, an internship at Little Europe. We want to grow the business. And that's something that I'm passionate about uh, to work in business development. Along the way, I also found that um, there's hardly any information for foreigners or for international companies in English, uh, information in English, on how to advertise to Taiwanese people. So that's what I focus on at the moment. Uh -huh. that, that, that's something that I need as well. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to struggle how to grow this YouTube channel like every single week. Do you have any general advice that would work for both me and Little Europe? I think you already do a really good job. Uh, <laughs> to, to. So uh, for Little Europe in, uh, in particular then, what, uh, what can we do to, to help them grow? First of all, maybe we should try our sausages. Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> and while Maya is preparing the sausages over in the kitchen, I want to continue talking a little bit more about traveling, specifically online traveling, and the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. 
If you don't know what a VPN is, then that stands for Virtual Private Network, which is a private network that you can connect your computer, phone or tablet to before you connect to the public network, the so-called internet. And not only will this add another layer of protection to your internet connection, which by the way is great to have if you are traveling overseas or for example Bali or to some other not as secure locations or internet connections. It also allows you to change your internet connection location pretty much more or less like Maya did when she was traveling around the entire Taiwan just using her thumb. But if you are using NordVPN then you can travel pretty much wherever you want at least online since NordVPN has countless of these connection hubs literally all over the world. So why would you want this? Well one reason could be to access specific websites that might be restricted depending on your actual region that you are connecting from or maybe you want to use some streaming services which only allow certain seasons to be available in certain regions meaning that you could actually travel to another location online and then continue watching the latest season which may not yet have been released here in Taiwan. And speaking about the kindness of the Taiwanese people, I also want to talk about the kindness of NordVPN. Since they now have a special promotion, so you can actually get up to 63% off their subscription plan and an additional 4 extra months if you are using the link down in the description. But now I can actually smell the German sausages all the way out here in our living room. So I think it's time for us to head back into the studio and continue with this video. Thank you so much for, for bringing this and yeah. also uh, preparing this. Of course, it's the, a pleasure, you're welcome. The authentic German way, just like we enjoyed it during Europe Day, the Europe Festival. Okay, guten Appetit. Guten Appetit. Guten Appetit. Ja, we're breaking all the rules now. I'm actually not allowed to eat in the studio for, oh. for my girlfriend. It's very strict, like you will be surprised how many eating rules there can be in a, in a Taiwanese slash Swedish household. This is technically work, so. Yeah. She has no power over my work. You're still the boss in this room. Right? Still part of the overall apartment. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like she is a little um, landlord in the middle. She ha still has like the last uh, authorization. Yes. And everything needs to be approved. In German we say she wears the trousers, which make which means she's the boss in the relationship. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yes, hundred percent. On the MRT, you're not allowed to eat right eat or drink and nobody does it also i don't see people eating in the streets to like take away not outside of the night market for me that's a bit strange because it's totally normal to eat in the street you know to get your kebab or something but here mm. people either eat in the restaurant or at home in the kitchen but like anywhere in between that's a no-no the weirdest thing i have seen is Tony's people buying food to eat while lining up to buy something else to mm. eat that is the weirdest thing to me ever. But that ever. is smart. I like that. Yeah, but like, why don't you just like buy two of the first thing so you don't have to line up again? But like, no, this, like this. But the lining up is not the problem. It's they they want to try a lot of different foods, and I totally identify with that. I would do the same. But you're you're German. You're supposed to be like just efficient. But in Germany, we have something similar. Look, when you go to drink, you often take oh. um, a big beer, which is like a beer for on the way. To the party mm. so it's sort of sort of like that concept of standing in line and you already have a snack or some food prepared right okay yeah i see so i see, I see. some similarities here between hmm. taiwan and germany this is very good by the way right do i do i dare to say that this is even better than when eckhart made it himself you might have to cut that <laughs> out <laughs> i like my internship you know? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> this is this is the second best little Europe German sausage <laughs> I've ever had in my life. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, yeah. what's what's so great about living here instead of living in like Germany or, or Netherlands? That it's very safe. Geographical location is really great. So from here you can also travel other countries in Asia. I feel like I found my people here as well. I found it very easy to integrate here, to make a lot of friends here on a personal level, but also on a professional level. And I feel like I have all the resources here that I need. To be fair though, you do sound like very easy to please. Only thing you need is like a 7-Eleven and some German <laughs> sausages, which you're helping to, to import yourself. So uh, yeah, what yes. else do you need? <laughs> I feel like hitchhiking I don't know if it's that common in, in Taiwan. No. Or I maybe I'm just like, really I'm too old for this. I had the idea from um, a person that I met in, in Nepal at, uh, uh, in a hostel. And he just casually mentioned that he, he hitchhiked all around Taiwan. I was like, okay, then, then I'm going to do the same. You're taking advice from someone who was hitchhiking around Taiwan and ending up in Nepal. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's like the, the, the last guy I would ask for directions of how to travel around Taiwan. A lot of people were concerned. I yeah. uh, I think it was not safe. I that's where some people wanted to like contact the police. But I also have to say I never had to wait very long. And most people didn't speak English, but still they were uh, very happy to help. Um, do, do they still understand this, or did they just like, oh, she must have hurt her thumb. Let me drive her to a hospital. <laughs> Maybe that's what everyone used to try to drive you to like nearest hospital or something. That's a good question, but. Um, I think most people understood sort of what what I wanted, and I also okay. because at that time I still don't speak very good Chinese, but usually I was somewhat able to communicate what I wanted and where I wanted to go. So that's why Taiwan never left me. Maybe I might have left Taiwan, but I always had to come back. That's yes. so cool. Yeah, that's that's like one of the few things I have not done in Taiwan yet. Like first of all, I never hitchhike, mm -hmm. but I also never traveled like Huandao, like around the island. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that it's definitely on my like to-do list. What, what was like your strongest memory then from from that whole adventure? Like, is there anything else that like a place that you went to or, or something that happened that? I could tell you so many things. <laughs> <laughs> How uh, long time do we have? Yes. Okay, I will tell you because it all leads to the best story. Okay, so I will. Okay. okay, buckling, folks. This is gonna be a long video. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so as I was hitchhiking, I met this one girl somewhere in Hualien and she said she wanted to go camp with her friends for 10 days or for two weeks and no running water. Back again, I was standing by the side of the road um, wanting to be picked up and I thought it would take ages, you know. I think I must have smelled a little bit. I only stood by the road for like a minute. I saw this van uh, driving my way. I was like, oh gosh. <laughs> With like the like side door opening. And <laughs> the, like, side, oh. the side door opened and then there was this little Taiwanese woman. She jumped out. She didn't ask any questions. I didn't get to ask, where are you going? Uh, can you take me? She just grabbed me. She pulled me in. Me and all my stuff, the door closed and we drove off. And I was like, oh gosh. <laughs> this, this, sounds, this, this story just went from like bad to worse. <laughs> this sounds terrible. Hey, it's gonna take a good turn. Wait, wait, wait. Um, oh, I'm getting like sweaty and nervous <laughs> from, from hearing this. I think right in this moment, I was adopted because she asked me what you I was doing. Adopted or abducted? <laughs> like just to get the, the, the glossary right. Here. I mean, adopted. Adopted. Okay. Adopted by Taiwanese. Okay. Um, Sounds more like kidnapped, but go on. <laughs> um, so she asked me, uh, the first question was, does your mom know what you're doing? I was like, yeah, why? Uh, because I <laughs> doesn't sound like she knows the details. <laughs> because I had just you know spent ten days in the jungle. Of course, there's no electricity, so my phone died. So of course, I had not talked to my mom. So she was like, "Oh my god, you have to call your mom right now and tell her you're okay." I was like, "Okay, but my phone is dead." She was like. Oh, then take my phone and call her. She, my mom didn't pick up. And then she was concerned later because she's, she got an, a call from a completely random number. <laughs> that's where, that's that where she just, just makes it worse. <laughs> that makes it worse. My backpack had actually broken. They actually emptied their own backpack and gave me hers. You don't have a power bank for your phone. Here is mine. I was like, oh my God, it's too much. <laughs> it's okay. I'm so thankful, but it's okay. I'm fine. They dropped me off at my hostel, which I had booked for that night, but we stayed in touch. And then later, when I um, ended up in Tainan. They picked me up and I actually stayed with them for two weeks. They introduced me to their whole family, to their teachers. They they showed, they showed me around their company. I stayed with them until I left Taiwan. And they, they, they brought me to the airport. <laughs> Uh, and we're still in touch until this day. Five years later. Um, this was five years ago and you're still staying in touch? Yes, yes, yes. Um, as soon as I booked my flight back to Taiwan, I, I sent them a message. I was like, oh, I'm coming back. Like, Bring the van, pick me up. <laughs> <Bring the> van. <laughs> yes, they were like, okay, we're coming. We're coming to the airport. We're picking you up. I was like, it's not necessary. It's, it's from a... like, from Hualien to the airport. Oh, they live in Tainan. So they wanted from to come Tainan to Tainan to the yeah, airport. So that's like how many hours, like two hours driving or three hours. That's, it's, it's, a, it's a long way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, I'm speechless until this day, but um, 
I'm so happy I met them. They just pulled me in in that van in that moment and I had no chance to ask any questions. It just just sounds terrifying when you put it like that. Yeah. But uh, yes. I'm glad that it all worked out. Yes, it was one of the best experiences. I think uh, we need to put up the sign again. Uh, do not try this at home <laughs> or, or anywhere. This is why I feel it's hard to sell in Taiwan as a backpacker destination. Because if you would approach me in Vietnam telling me this story, using this as a promotion for why I should come and visit Taiwan, I would never talk to you ever again. <laughs> you would think I'm crazy. I would, <laughs> yes. Like, this would never happen in Germany or ever. Yeah, no, the, no. the story would be a lot shorter in anywhere in Europe. Like, they opened the van and then that's it. No <laughs> one ever saw Maya ever since. <laughs> Is there any difference between, like, studying in Netherlands, where you're studying, mm -hmm. and Taiwan? Or if we think one step ahead, assuming that you will graduate now, which will this help you graduate, by the way? Is this like part of like your thesis or something? Yes, my professors are going to love this if I put this in my bachelor thesis. This is unique, special, so people watch a lot of times. We need one million views. That's the goal, right? It, otherwise, graduate. you would not graduate. Is that, is otherwise, that I don't works? graduate. So okay. please share, subscribe, like. <laughs> Please. Taking all the knowledge that you have now gathered, both in Netherlands and Taiwan, do you see like, would there be a difference on how you would conduct like digital marketing? The biggest difference in Taiwan is that people interact with your brand a lot more or they they give you reviews a lot more or they join your line channel. I feel like in Germany, the communication is a lot, you know, one way, the brand communicating to, to the person, to the consumer, while here, it's a two-way street, a two-way road. Um, so I think that's the biggest difference that I, I saw so far. You're on your way back almost towards the, the end of your, your stay here. Unfortunately, yeah. When will we see you back in Taiwan again? As soon as possible. Uh, I hope in July already, like oh, the, a, a month later. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like right, we're just back home grabbing like a whole suitcase filled <laughs> with more German sausage and yes, then uh, coming exactly. back. I don't want to waste any time in Germany. I just want to come back. Yes, Taiwan is like home. Now, to me already, it feels like. So yeah, maybe spend some time with my family, but then as soon as I can, back on the next flight to, to Taiwan. If that's the case, then I hope that you will also end up back here in the studio again. Yes. So we get to make another video when you're yes. back, hopefully, maybe even for good next time, or Let's for at least so. a lot yes. longer. And uh, if that is something that you want to see, please do remember to subscribe to this channel, show your support by liking this video. And if you are one of Maya's professors watching this video, please do give her A or A plus. And uh, please also hit that bell so you get notified the next time we are making a video with Maya here in Taiwan. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas. It starts with L as in like, ends with S as in subscribe. Please to both and see you all in the next one. Bye bye.